Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for coming back. You're very welcome. Right, I've been asked how to set this thing up. Um, in the video I did yesterday, I just more or less showed the whole setup. So this is it in a little bit more detail. Um, now a lot of you will know how to do all this, but just for anyone who doesn't know, this is the setup. Okay, so I've got a tank connector here, a small piece of pipe, a gate valve, all in half inch, and it goes down to a kind of a setup I've made myself. This is um, a ton dish. Essentially, it's going to look like one of these, okay? So that's a proper ton dish. This one I made myself out of some bits and pieces I had out there. And I just soldered them up. This was an automatic air vent. I took the top off it and I'm just using it as, a, as one of these. The reason I didn't use this one, I have a few of these, but the reason I didn't use it is I hadn't got a way of connecting onto this handy at the time. So I just, I made one. Um, so that's a ton dish, we call them. I don't know what you call them in the States. And uh, you can get them in metal. Metal would be better, preferred. Okay, so that essentially fits there. And what happens is the oil drips into this and you can see the drips. You can actually see the flow rate um, of the oil as it travels by here. Because if it goes by here, it's heading into the stove and you can see what your stove is getting. Okay, so that's a ton dish. This is just a standard um, half inch gate valve. Okay, with compression fittings on it. And they work like this. Okay, so this is a, an example of a compression fitting. It's a, a T piece, but the connections are exactly the same. Only this one is three quarter. So you've got a nut. You've got a ring. This is an olive, we call them. Uh, it's a compression ring. Essentially it goes onto the pipe. And as you tighten the nut up against the, the body of the fitting, it squashes it and it expands or contracts inward, uh, getting a great grip on the pipe. So that's just a compression fitting. Um, available everywhere here, and I presume in America and all over the world as well. Okay, so as I tighten that up, if there's a pipe in there, the pipe gets uh, has that ring squashed onto it. So that's, that's uh, just an example of a compression fitting. Okay, and they're the fittings I used here. So the pipe is in there, I tighten that nut, it squashes on that ring, the olive, and um, causes it to, to tighten on the pipe, making a waterproof joint, or in our case, an oilproof joint. Uh, that goes down to another piece of pipe into my homemade ton dish, and then a couple of connectors to get me from half inch down to 10 mil. I think you'll be using something like 3.8 if you're using it. I would actually prefer to stay with um, half inch, but um, it's a lot easier to bend um, 10 mil copper. So you can see these are machine bends, okay? And uh, this is just a small little pipe bender, you know. Uh, you can use it on brake pipe, that sort of stuff. Um, and I just put the pipe in there, pull it around. And you can do it very easily by hand. It's not hard, it's, it's really easy. So that's the setup close up. Um, now the, the tank connector is a, is a funny one. Okay, this is the tank connector I used up here. Okay, on the, well, you can't see it now that I used up here on the bottom of the um, of the tank. Okay, so this can go into something really big, you know, 20 foot by 20 foot, or in my case, into a two liter um, disposable uh, milk carton. Okay, so that's it here. Uh, just a back nut. Uh, this isn't really a great example. I prefer them if they've got a compression nut and ring on this, on this end. This one, you can push a pipe in but the problem with that is it's got an o-ring in there and if you're using waste oil the waste oil is going to degrade the o-ring and eventually leak but um, in any case that's um, that's what it looks like there so you drill a hole in whatever you're, you're using as a tank uh, exactly the size you know so that it's a snug fit on the tread push that in put your back nut on tighten your back nut and you're away that's it so that's all I did there I put a bit of PTFE tape on it Teflon tape um, just to help with the seal. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of valves now on how they work. Okay, some of the guys have some great ideas on, on feed systems or whatever. This is what we've got today. Look, this is how a gate valve works. It's just a big gate valve I have. Um, obviously, this one is about inch and a quarter. You would be using something, you know, half inch or smaller. And it's just, you're pulling up a drawbridge and allowing the fluid through. That's it. So, some of the guys um, recommended that I cut a V-groove here on one side of it and uh, just a little notch on the far side and it has proved really really good but if you go too deep 
with your groove on the on this side um, your valve won't close off you're actually you know creating a leak but with that said that's that's a gate valve okay some of the boys are using um, globe valves or quarter turn valves and they work with a big ball in the middle you can see the ball turning and the hole in it okay and you know some people are using these successfully uh, mechanical systems where you've actually got um, uh, a metering pump would be a better solution because you can control it um, an awful lot better and uh, and it's not it's not um, affected by the vagaries of of heat changes in the room or in the environment you know if your oil gets hot it becomes more runny if you like you know so anyway um, metering pump is probably the best way to go so no great mystery on that that's the, that's the setup there the rest of it then into the stove now all of this is temporary for me all of it so I'll just show you okay so we had one firing of this yesterday and that video is up on on YouTube it's live at the moment okay so uh, these are just bends on the pipe um, and you can see where it was in the flames yesterday so and that's it and um, inside further inside in the stove then I put in a couple of plates okay just so you can see the setup in, in close so these plates are just metal I had in there right and their their sole function is just to, to force all the air for combustion up through here okay and uh, the reason for that is the type of burner I made absolutely has to have all its air coming up from the bottom it draws the air from outside of the stove okay so I've showed this burner a few times this is my own design uh, it works really really well very easy to make and cheap as chips okay this is three inches in, uh, in, in width and in height three inches seven and a half inches in diameter from there to here this was a propane tank a propane bottle and I just drilled holes every inches all the way around those holes are about 10 12 millimeters in diameter all the way around one inch one inch separation and then when you get to the end if it's too much you know just half the distance and off you go um, they start at about an inch off the bottom of, of the uh, the burner and there's one two three four rows of holes you could try three rows see how you get on all of that there's nothing written in in stone on this it's trial and error so that's what's left in the uh, the burn chamber or the of this vaporizing pot if you like after uh, maybe two hours of use yesterday okay so that's it very easy to make this is three mil uh, steel uh, this whatever it, the propane bottle was made of and I allow a little bit of it to show on the bottom and that for me acts like a locator you know so that I know that it's sitting in the hole below it but all the air for combustion goes this way and only that way and then it comes out here in the combustion chamber and for fitting it once you're set up that's it it's in uh, there's no more setting up on that now I'm actually ready to light a fire okay I'll show that in a second so look we're gonna light this now uh, so and I'm gonna show you how I do it but first because this is um, my domestic stove and I'm not gonna mess with it I'm just gonna put this back in that's just a um, a cast iron uh, baffle if you like okay so here we go we're gonna light it now we've got a um, fire starter fire lighter um, this stove is actually pulling the smoke into it there at that already because the the draw on it is, is very very good uh, it's an 8 inch flue all the way to the roof about 8 meters of it and 6 inch pipe for the last little bit okay so you can see that now I'm going to put a bit of kerosene in it just to speed things up okay so if you try to put kerosene into an already um, hot burner uh, you might be in trouble so don't do that okay so nothing happens it's just burning normally but when I close the door it gets all its air up through the bottom and things change you can see the difference in the flame and you can hear the, the difference in combustion okay so that's purely kerosene now at the moment 
Okay, and before we go too far, this is the, the door off the old Minion. And I'm just gonna put it in here as a heat deflector. Just to try and keep the, uh, the flames, if I can, away from the glass. So, and that's it. I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna give it some oil. Okay, so, here goes the oil. Okay, so that's the temperature of my, um, my water in the jacket of the stove now at the moment. It's 20 degrees. Okay, and as the stove continues on to burn like this, um, obviously that, um, that temperature is going to rise. That's the oil I have left. The, uh, the valve, which is, which is fairly, you know, not great, has gone to drips now. And if you can see that. Let's see. Okay, it's very hard to see, I think. But I need um, a stream a little like that. You know, one up from, uh, from a drip and I can actually, you know, uh, maintain a good flame. I need to direct the flame there away from the glass. Um, it, it is getting a bit uh, blackened, but uh, the flame is very bright in behind that. Okay, so we're going an hour now, um, and there's still some fuel left. So that's two liters, I started off with two liters full to the brim of exactly two liters of uh, waste veggie oil and uh, it's been producing quite a bit of heat um, plenty of flame and you can see it there and um, amazingly enough that's what we've got left by way of oil okay uh, I don't know if you can see it but 55.3 so we've heated a, um, a room upstairs a uh, slab downstairs and now I've, I've uh, just switched on the water so we'll get quite a bit of water now out of the uh, the, the rest of this oil so I'm gonna sign off now so look just a, a reminder be very careful um, I know somebody somewhere is gonna have a go at this in, in the house don't you know um, you probably don't know enough about it there's a good chance you're gonna get hurt a uh, good chance something's gonna go wrong and you'll have no house so please you know become an expert but do it in a shed or something somewhere safe um, okay that said um, this is for me it's just proof of concept I wanted to make a burner unit that I could put in the stove without any modifications um, this is actually a very good stove Waterford Stanley uh, it's my stove it's in the house I'm not making any modifications to it I'm not drilling it I'm not welding I'm not you know anything to it um, so I just wanted to see would it work and that's the reason that I'm going in the bottom in here with the pipe in through the bottom door and not like through the side this is uh, enameled I can't drill it any of that I can't damage it it's, it's in my house so um, anyway look uh, very efficient you can see it it's fairly whacking out the heat um, you can see the heat rise there it's, it's up at 59.8 0.9 60 now it's sending um, hot water along some pipe work down to my 300 liter cylinder okay the cylinder will accept the heat cool that water down when the water comes back returned cooler it will switch off um, when it gets to about 55 degrees or exactly 55 degrees but look I don't know what you can see it's quite small in the, in the video so look um, producing a ton of heat when I open the door we lose um, we lose the pressure on the system and it will stop look there's no point in me taking readings off the, the side walls of the stove because um, it's a water jacket on the other side of that there's water but you can hear how, how you know how it's changed the, the characteristics of the flame we don't get anything out of it unless we drive air through it, which is what we're doing as soon as we close the door. So look, that's the best I can do this evening. Um, if you liked the video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. I won't be doing any more videos in the house, but um, I have some other stuff in mind anyway. So look, thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.